Shuichi Yokoyama, who is there as a non realistic hybrid geometry and gravitational field So, thank you for the introduction. Uh, it is my great pleasure to give a talk in the uh, in this uh, audience of the researcher in the East Asia. Uh, okay, I gave a uh, I gave a talk in the same topic in the uh, this on the workshop in the se uh, same series workshop in two years ago held in the uh, case <coughs> and this is a kind of uh, report of the progress after the talk. So, and this talk uh, is about actually reconstruction of the bulk theory from the boundary in the context of the holography. But, or if, or this work can be understood as some new uh, solution generating technique of certain gravitational system. And this talk is uh, based on these two papers. And uh, uh, the one is uh, this one with, with collaboration with Shinya Aoki, who is in the Yukawa Institute, and uh, uh, Kentaro Yoshida, who is in the department in the University of Kyoto. And the, uh, the other one is uh, submitted in the archive last Friday. Uh, it's also work with uh, all of you also please put up this So let me briefly uh, 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 review the, some old aspect of holography, which states that some equivalence between certain theory of the boundary uh, and the theory of the bulk, which was uh, experimentally uh, discovered by this gentleman and So this is some basic uh, 
motivation of this work. So let me explain uh, some aspects of flow equation. And this technique was actually introduced uh, in the community of the lattice QCD and these authors. And this describes uh, some non-local post graining of uh, operator. Uh, so let me more detail. Uh, the, so let's consider some p-dimensional CFT, which contains uh, some primary scalar like this. Then general flow equation is something like this. So you, we introduce some one parameter either, uh, and this is some kind of flow equation whose initial uh, uh, condition is given by this this scalar primary scalar. And if this, uh, uh, so you need to specialize certain uh, uh, smearing functional as a, and if this functional is same as the action of the theory, then this flow equation is called the gradient flow, which you may be more familiar with. But, but in the context of holography, uh, we choose uh, this uh, some free flow equation, who is a form of the given like this. And, uh, okay. So, uh, you, you can solve easily this row equation by using the uh, green green function like this. So this is some kind of some uh, some uh, uh, convolution of the some original field like this. And this may be reminiscent of the block spin transformation. And uh, let me explain this. So block spin transformation is something like this. Consider some lattice lattice system and uh, uh, spin variable on each lattice, which is denoted by SI. Then let's consider the big bigger block like this. Yes. And the proximal transformation is sum over the, this block with weight one and with certain normalization. <coughs> now the, the flow operator is uh, obtained like, uh, by the following. So consider some space and some point like operator, then uh, I sum all over the space with uh, this Gaussian wave factor. Then you obtain certain extended object from the point like right object. In this sense, that uh, this uh, post, -grain, post graining is non-local. Then the, so what's the point? So the point is that after this smearing, this object has no contact singularity in the two-point function. And this can be easily uh, confirmed by uh, just com just computation. And the two-point function of this smear operator is given like this, where f is uh, some uh, function like this. And the contact limit is just this x1 x equal to x2, which is just finite. If, if, uh, you can use the from here. So this has no contact singularity. And this property is very important to construct the holographic space. And uh, to do this, uh, I define some dimension, dimensionless normalized operator like this. And uh, but here, I already use the fact that this has no contact singularity. And uh, by using this uh, normalized operator, uh, I define some metric operator, so called this one. And taking back of this uh, metric operator, uh, the sub, uh, sub metric is okay. And I, uh, I want to uh, uh, identify this as a sub metric in the holographic space. And uh, this metric is actually interpreted as an information metric. Okay, in the current setup of some CFT, uh, one can easily compute this uh, in this metric, like this, and the result is the ABS space, which is uh, what I, I talked about in two years ago in, the, uh, in this series of workshop. And so finally, in, the, in our approach, this smearing, uh, this data direction is given by some smearing parameter. And, uh, and this holographic space is uh, flowed by this a series of the kilometer space. 
This is a picture. So th this is a framework. So I want to apply this framework to the a module, a general set of no right no speed case. Uh, so to do this, let's consider a non relative CFP with a complex scalar primary field. The whose two point factor is given by this. And uh, for convenience, let's introduce some one extra direction, uh, which is regarded as uh, another uh, light component uh, by regarding the time direction as uh, the opposite of the, uh, uh, this uh, light component. And that's the uh, x minus two zero, then this reduces to this. Then let's smear operator, this primary <coughs> operator by this. Uh, I add this, this parameter m bar in the, this flow equation. Uh, actually, uh, this is important to resolve the contact to singularity in the general setup of the non relativistic CFD. Then I uh, define in the same way the holographic metric in this way. Now the field is complex, so I need to uh, choose uh, uh, this this way so that the metric is real. And the two point function is given like this. And the, the, the result is a following. So we obtain this metric and and G is uh, this uh, sub function uh, characterized of uh, this smear two point function. And if G is a general function, then this, this geometry is a lifted geometry. Time some to the line with critical exponent 2. And when the, this function satisfies this condition, then this actually same as a Schrodinger space time with d plus 2 dimension. So in this sense, we uh, refer to this geometry as non relativistic hy hybrid geometry. Uh, okay, so we, by using some these techniques, we obtain some, some geometry, but the uh, okay, question is is it really possible to realize uh, this uh, geometry from the, some, some uh, a gravitational system? So, uh, we asked ourselves uh, this question, and we answered this question by, by this paper. <coughs> so let me let me uh, uh, reset the problem again. So let's consider this geometry, uh, where the three parameter deformation of the areas. Uh, uh, x, alpha, beta, gamma set to zero, then this is just areas. And, uh, Okay, question is uh, just a, just a, the purely GR problem. Can you really uh, find a theory which will rewrite this geometry? And uh, although this is just a purely GR problem, the, this program is very useful to uh, guess or yeah, guess the 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 part the theory is. Okay, to explain this, let's consider. Uh, the theory uh, with, uh, yeah. So we have some normalized field here, uh, originally from the primary complex scalar, and there is uh, some global action, the field rotation of the phase like this. And I, 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 we construct this uh, metric operator like this, but uh, now there is uh, another operator uh, which is non trivial. In, in the complex scale of it like this. Actually, the, the, the one that we can compute uh, the value of this operator like this. Okay, so, and the, the our common understanding is that this global symmetry uh, corresponds to the gauge symmetry in the bar. So, uh, let's get this uh, U1 global action. Then uh, this physical degree of freedom corresponds to the some charge of scalar with unit charge, and this operator corresponds to the some gauge field, which can be easily seen by uh, gauging the global symmetry uh, here. 
uh, this uh, this one can be obtained easily from here. And uh, actually, this metric of delta is, uh, is not invariant under this uh, UI. So, but uh, hopefully, the, uh, we think that some mixed uh, this gain symmetry maybe is also mixed with uh, different one. So anyway, and uh, this shows that this particle number uh, symmetry corresponds to that this U1 Abelian gain symmetry. About. So particle number symmetry is translation on x minus. Uh, x minus. Uh, uh, that was the usual setup of Bamson and McLeod solution, right? For Schrodinger's. Uh, particle number symmetry was isometry on x minus. Was that true? Uh, uh, At least for Schrodinger. Uh, Well, uh, I, I, I cannot say that again, but uh, okay, I, uh, this is related to the particle number symmetry, sure, because the phase rotation of the, so, but uh, maybe, uh, I, I, I have no definite answer now, sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, natural, natural guess of the realized this system is low energy effective action uh, constructed by these uh, fields, and uh, a candidate is max Einstein maximum peak system like this. Uh, but uh, okay, we uh, try to uh, capture this geometry, but the, actually this system cannot capture all the, these uh, parameters, alpha, beta, gamma. Only alpha can be explained uh, by this system, which uh, is maybe uh, natural because uh, uh, okay this uh, okay if we choose this potential as a, some for the y model, then this child scale field is condensed, and this system reduces to the uh, some vector matter, so. And it was shown that the, back, the Einstein with vector matter uh, can uh, can support the, the shredding but uh, not not to, not to the this geometry. So we are stuck to uh, to solve this answer. Uh, but the, actually, the a clue is the origin of this parameter of beta gamma. And this is related to M bar, which uh, come from which come from the uh, flow equation. And the flow equation is chosen by hand, uh, so this is not physical in the theory. So, so we uh, the, and the, our final answer is actually we add some some gauge fixing down here, and it is important to break, for example, low range invariance or. Uh, Fix a different morphism. Uh, okay, the uh, the point is that you can you cannot explain by adding some uh, gate fix term for this U one or uh, uh, without breaking the Lorentz invariant. And uh, okay, this this result may indicate that uh, some choice of smearing uh, in the bar uh, in the boundary may correspond to the choice of gate. The bulk, uh, which is some uh, scratch of the uh, uh, the frame, but uh, we hope to uh, elaborate on the, this uh, correspondence. Okay. So let me summarize. Uh, we investigate the holographic geometry by no no fix CFT by employing flow equation, and we obtain some geometry interpolating shredding and ellipses. And this system can be invariant by this Einstein Max Fix system, this graph gravitational gate fixed down. And there are several future directions of the time process. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Yeah. So sorry that I didn't follow the, all the details of your derivation, but in the non relativistic case, you get generalized two more directions, right? Mm -hmm. X minus direction and another tau direction, you say? That's right, yeah. But I didn't understand uh, how x minus was generated in your setup because 
Uh, I, rem I remember that having x minus in Schrodinger geometry was phenomenologically very bad because its colors of flying particles demanded infinite power of particle species, which we usually don't have, right? That's right. So, so how did you get this x minus? Yeah, that that actually uh, was some pro I mean, the issue of the the behavior of the boundary, right? How to zero? Then this this may perhaps and uh, uh, but. Uh, Somehow this flow equation captures a bulk, bulk space, uh, which. Uh, so, uh, for instance, could you create a non-relativistic CFT geometry without x minus, or is that mandatory in your setup? Um,